educação Pensar transforma, muda É abolição Freiriana É sua missão Pensar transforma, muda É evolução O conhecimento liberta Vamos transformar Educar o mundo de dentro pra fora interpretar Mundo líquido Monolítico A solução é alfabetizar, é reinventar Me dê a mão e vamos para a luta já Braços abertos a felicidade encontrar de braços dados vamos ao outro ajudar Paulo, pernambucano, franzino Valente, homem de bem, revolucionário Pensador, além do seu tempo Destemido com um futuro visionário você sim merece uma estátua, meu rapaz Herói nacional, defensor da cultura e paz Foi traído, perseguido Seus ideais foram oprimidos e subjugados Portanto, amor ao próximo Paulo foi esse lado. Plantou a semente com amor e dedicação. Com métodos da primária pós-graduação. Mais oprimido, alunos com valores, ético crítico, criador da escola, do saber sobre o poder. Que o mundo moderno não mate os nossos sonhos, questiona sempre, inclusive os frenianos, tudo de ciência. Reflexão da complexidade humana Paulo Cristão, a base do pensamento racional Ensino é um ato político cultural Paulo, pernambucano, franzino 
valente homem de bem, revolucionário, pensador, além do seu tempo, destemido como futuro visionário. Você sim merece uma estátua, meu rapaz, herói nacional, defensor da cultura e paz. Traído, perseguido, seus ideais foram oprimidos e subjugados. Voltando o amor ao próximo, Paulo foi esse lado. Plantou a semente com amor e dedicação, com métodos da primária pós-graduação. Mais oprimidos, alunos com valores, ético crítico, criador da escola, do saber sobre o poder. Que o mundo moderno não mate os nossos sonhos, questiona sempre, inclusive os frevianos, tudo de ciência. Fora da sala de aula, aprender emana Reflexão da complexidade humana Paulo Cristão, a base do pensamento racional Ensino é um ato político cultural Professor Bento 
mais oprimido Alunos com valores Ético, crítico Criador da escola Do saber sobre o poder Que o mundo moderno Não mate os nossos sonhos Questiona sempre Inclusive os freirianos Tudo ciência Ao aprender emana Reflexão da complexidade humana Palmo cristão a base do pensamento racional Ensino é um ato político cultural Pensar transforma, muda, é abolição Freiriana é sua missão Pensar transforma, muda, é evolução O conhecimento liberta, vamos transformar Educar o mundo de dentro pra fora interpretar Alfabetizar é reinventar Me dê a mão e vamos para a luta já Braços abertos a felicidade encontrar De braços dados vamos ao outro ajudar Palmo, pernambucano, franzino Valente, homem de bem Revolucionário, pensador, além do seu tempo, destemido com um futuro visionário. Você sim merece uma estátua, meu rapaz, herói nacional, defensor da cultura e paz. Foi traído. Portanto, o amor ao próximo Paulo foi esse lado. Plantou a semente com amor e dedicação. Com métodos da primária pós-graduação. Mais oprimido, alunos com valores, ético, crítico, criador da escola, do saber sobre o poder. Que o mundo moderno não mate os nossos sonhos, questiona sempre, inclusive os freirianos, tudo de ciência. Ao aprender emana Reflexão da complexidade humana Palmo cristão a base do pensamento racional Ensino é um ato político cultural Educação 
coração Pensar transforma, muda, é abolição Freiriana é sua missão Pensar transforma, muda, é evolução O conhecimento liberta, vamos transformar Educar o mundo de dentro pra fora interpretar Solução é alfabetizar, é reinventar Me dê a mão e vamos para a luta já Braços abertos a felicidade encontrar De braços dados vamos ao outro ajudar Paulo, pernambucano, franzino Valente, homem de bem Revolucionário, pensador, além do seu tempo, destemido. So, good evening, everyone. We are here today uh, in our monthly meeting to honor uh, the Paulo Freire Centennial organized by the Hot House Global. Uh, my name is Rita Sakai. I'm here today because um, I'm a graduate from uh, uh, University of Illinois of Chicago, and uh, I, ex I, I studied the Cuba Literacy Campaign of 1961. And uh, tonight, um, we are going to um, have guests and uh, discussants and uh, friends that will be talking about another national another literacy campaign that took place in Australia. Our first discussant and guest is uh, Bob Balton. Uh, Bob Balton is an adjunct professor of adult education at the University of New England, a small regional university in New South Wales in Australia. In 2005, Bob began working with a Cuban adult literacy mission using the um, Cuban model known internationally as Josi Puedo. The program has since expanded, reaching Australian First Nation communities and uh, affecting over 200,000 people. The campaign is one of the, the campaign in one of these communities, pardon me, Brewarina, is the subject of the film today, and it's called In My Own Words. In addition to papers on the Cuba Leaders Campaign in Timor-Leste and Australia, Bob also writes about the relationship between the Cuban International Literacy Missions and the Freirean tradition of popular education. Also, we have uh, Mary Waits with us, who, part who uh, was the coordinator of the campaign in Brew Arena. Uh, we Janelle Frail, who was a facilitator during the uh, campaign, and the Norman Coffey, also facilitator of, uh, during the campaign. The, the film today is about the literacy campaign that took place in 2015 in Brew Arena, Australia. And uh, um, I would like to pass to Bob and uh, if, uh, uh, for him to add a few more details, just to summarize what the film is about. Thanks very much, Rita, and hello to Janelle and Norman and Mary, um, who are in Brewarrina, many hundreds of kilometres from where I am on the coast of New South Wales now. And um, But in 2015 and 2016, I worked in Brewarrina with Mary and Janelle and Norman, and the many students and other people in the community who took part. And a First Nations filmmaker, Erica Glynn, asked if she could make a film of one of the intakes during the campaign. And the, she met with the community and spent some time discussing with people. And they agreed that they, she could make a film. And she followed the students and the teachers through the campaign over a period of several months 
from the beginning of the first class right through to the graduation. And as people will see when they watch the film, she also spent a lot of time in the community um, filming other aspects of people's lives. So you can see the context in which the campaign was run. Brewarren is a very small, remote community in Western New South Wales on the Barwon River, the site of one of the oldest uh, constructions by humans on the planet, the Brewarren of fish traps, which were built thousands and thousands of years ago by the Niambar people. So it's a very important place for the local people and a very important place in the First Nations history of Australia. And the, um, the campaign and the film, the film of the campaign gives people a really good view, I think, of life in Brewarrina. Um, I might just mention quickly that the, uh, the, the, some of the students who were in the campaign also have uh, gone on to achieve many things since then. And we will talk a little bit about that during the, during the discussion today. Um, now, I'd like to just ask if Mary or Norman or Janelle would like to say anything else at the beginning about the film and their participation in it. Yeah, well, I started off, um, we went around every house out in Bree, doing surveys, um, asking people about their literacy and was quite surprised with a lot of people, a lot of our people didn't know how to read and write properly. And um, our first intake would have been youngest uh, 15 to 72. That was the age range. So that was really good to see. The elders helping the young, youngsters and the youngsters helping the elders. We had a few in there Elders who didn't even know how to hold a pen and paper, you know, pen properly, and it was sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was good to see them that they wanted to learn at their age. It sounds like it was an amazing experience just to see how the students had to overcome a challenge of learning after they are older or when they thought themselves that they are not capable of learning. Norman, how did you feel about it? I mean, would you like to share? So when I first started, um, didn't talk much, but once I got into it, I, you know, saw it, um, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of empowered myself and, um, doing this uh, with the Yes I Can program it um, empowered me to uh, achieve more things I, for myself and I learned a lot about people like because um, a lot of those people especially young fellas and uh, um, elders they, they were shy of course they couldn't, you know, like, well, I'm, I'm not very well educated, but I know how to read and write and, and we shared that experience hey, with, with, yeah. with, the, uh, with the people and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even just some of the stories from the elders, you know, like um, how they had to leave school when they were 12 and 13 help their parents raise the younger siblings and that. And so they didn't have that mm -hmm. opportunity in edu education, yeah. So we are going to start our uh, future presentation and uh, we'll, back, we'll be back shortly for our conversation. Enjoy the film.
going. There you go, in there. Yeah, we've got the little one today with Johnny Law. I was at preschool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was born here in Biwarana. I've always lived here and I always will. Even though there aren't many jobs to go around, I'm lucky because I got one. I was worried because I was thinking, can I do this, you know, is it too much for me? According to your timetable, you go to lunch at 12, so if you did teach on Monday, what would happen with your lunch break? Do you think what would be it? Well, if I only thought if I was to have lunch break, it would be like four and a half an hour. You could manage that, yeah. could you? Okay. Yeah. So, if you could manage the half hour break, can you manage buying all the food, morning tea, doing the pickup, and teaching two lessons and preparing the morning tea? And Mary, your yeah. choice is the right choice. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you why I couldn't imagine getting this job because I, I felt and I thought I wasn't good enough. And when I said to people when I was a coordinator, they went, woo, you know, top position, you know, I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Durnham? Durnham? I'm still shake my head out of it, you know, and think, why, you know? Why me? So, where are we going now? Newtown? We've got to Newtown, Charmer. Newtown, yeah. yeah. In the 1960s, 70% of the Cubans couldn't read or write. So they worked out a way to get their people literate. And now they're in Brewarana helping my mob. So he knows where I'm coming today. Yes, Hello. 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 This is Carla. Yeah. This is Connie. Yeah. 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 So Stanley, we come up to do a, a survey with you. Yes, with the, yes I can. The literacy for life. Yeah. Um, so we've been employed to help find out how many people in our community will be worrying and need help with reading and writing. And we want to participate in the adult literacy campaign. So, are you willing to take part? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, my name is Chala. I've come from Cuba. Yeah, when we done the survey, we found out that it was half the adults in the community that didn't know how to read and write. For example, do you have any difficulties? You know, they said they can read their name and write their address, but to go and write a sentence, it, they still struggled through it. Good morning, Amy. Yeah. Well, some of them knew how to read and write a little bit. They know how to write their names and address, but that's how far it goes. They can't go any further. So I'll just get your name, your full name. Mm-hmm. Connie Shillings well. Hi, what the one is? One. No, this one. King. No, that's not a king. What's that one? Uh, Jacks. Jacks. That's just mine. It's got two sixes. One, two, three. <laughs> Down there. So I was very saddened at how many of our people didn't have to read right. Blank when I got to the machine. It'll balance for a while. I'm gonna stand there for a while. He's right. I'll read that. Mm -hmm. Ah, 
Arsch und klicken. Bueno. Ah. Hey. Well, you want to get those packets? Which one will be cheaper? And I'm slow counting money. When I'm uh, paying for something, I just give them 50. Small pack of Long Beach Crisp. Well, I'm happy to as soon as I see a, like a $20 note, $10 note. Okay, well, that's right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I just put a bag in my wallet. I don't count it. They rip me off. There's two, so there's this and then the next one, and she just said it's a bit awkward. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't move here. And it's all on the table. He finally got it, but yeah. I think it definitely needs someone to come and look at it. Very nice, Charla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we thought that this Cuban model would work here in Aboriginal Australia. Their own mob teaches it. And with the community taking ownership of it, that's what makes it work. Is that what we call central air conditioning? I don't think it is, Charla. Very different. The houses in Havana are very different. It's very, in general, houses here are very wide. Yes, it could be a dream for many people in my country, even for me, <laughs> to have a house like this. Beautiful. I will pretend the way I do when I come to Australia for the first two months, because after that I get used to not seeing snakes. <laughs> oh my God, there it is. <laughs> Don't, don't make jokes about that. I believe the yes I can is the answer to my community, but whether they come is their choice. Because some of my people got bad experiences through education. And how do I bring my people through those front doors? Hello, Baron. We're going to kick off in about 10 minutes. Yeah. Everyone got their lesson plans? Yeah. Any questions? Hello, Mary. Hi. Have we got any students? Yeah, we've got a couple. Have yeah, we? A couple of students there, yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we haven't got 30. No, we haven't got 30. <laughs> Good morning everyone, I'm Deborah Vernon and um, I've been working on the campaign with, in, with Chama in Wilcannia, then we went over to Burke um, and Gonia. So I only come about once every month for about a week. Um, please, any questions, any problems, you know, you mightn't like the coffee or something, you might like a different brand. Come and see Mary, she's your person to take care of everything and then she comes and complains to me. Thank you. Okay, before we go any further, um, we've got Charla here this morning. We might be able to say, um, yes, I can in Spanish. Yo si puedo. Can you say it? Yo si puedo. Yo si puedo. Good. Very good. <laughs> okay, let's do it together. One, two, three. Yo si puedo. Excellent. <laughs> so, I'm going to move on and we're going to introduce everyone this morning in the classroom. Anyone here first? My name's Clarence Gibbs. And now I try my hand. So Clarence? You wasn't sure what type? Clarence? No. Breakfast. At Johnny Cake and a cup of tea for breakfast. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, when I see that many students walk through the door, I, I was on top of the world, you know. It, it's good, but I don't see any of the young blokes. It's a bit disappointing because they're the ones that really need it. And our classroom this morning is a safe place. 
It doesn't matter what tribe we have come from. So whatever garbage that we want to carry if around inside, if we've got a grudge against someone else, or something that's happened out in, in, in the community, or something that's happened between families, we don't want to bring those into the classroom. The gate is the gates at the front, the double gates. So we just ask you to leave that rubbish at the gate. It'll be there when you've finished at 12.30, so you are very welcome to pick it up and to take it back home with you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I knew you were on tomorrow. You two. Yeah. Beautiful. I think I was about uh, 14, 15 when I left school. I only went to year eight then. There you make them. Because no one was there for me to push me and encourage me to go on, you know. And I noticed at school, you got treated different when you was from Dodge City, because you was from the mish, from the reserve and you was on the outskirts, so you was a, a dirty little black kid from Dodge City. They didn't care. Want to put yours on? Yeah. Hi. Didn't do much learning. Teacher wouldn't come near me. Take one over to Nanlina, <coughs> one of my ones. Yeah. You see here, Mary, number two, we've actually today, we're going to ask the students to copy these words into their book. So Janelle's written them on the board. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Are you happy about that? Yeah. Um, and remember, you can say to them, can you look around the room? Can you see the letter E anywhere? There's an E, two E's, three E's, mm. one E, you know, just yes. move around, be a bit active, get them to look at things. Yeah. Carl, okay? Yeah. All right. I was really confused when I first seen the lesson plan. It was very detailed. Yeah, so I was learning as well. And what makes me strongest through it all is because how I was never taught at school, you know, and how it affected me and I didn't want that for them. Yeah. It sort of makes me Sorry and shame in a way that I can't read. It annoyed me. I'm trying to do the right thing now by myself. Learn to read. So if I'm going to the school then, so I can understand myself. and go and again eh, and see what's, what's out there, what's expected in class this morning again. 
everyone's comfortable, everyone had a cup of tea and coffee, toast and a yarn and a smoke, yeah? Okay, thank you everyone. I'll end over to Janelle and Tami. Good morning. I'm going to say the day to day. And remember Laura needs a teacher, so we've got to look and listen to Laura. Well, as long as you can see your book. What if you move up the front? Sort of like my father was, um, he couldn't read. Oh, some of my his brothers too couldn't read properly. They didn't worry about school. And they get a decent job too if I can read. Four times, lowercase and uppercase and on your practice sheet. I've been everywhere working in, out around the for cotton fields. Yeah, everything falling to pieces now, all the cotton finished. It must be done at somewhere else because there big trucks going through with big rolls of cotton. When I was a young fellow, we had to pick a job up everywhere. Like rouse about and in the sheds. Now and again, I go mustering, sheep. Really, I had no, no life now, because now my job is when they get me to mow their lawn. Yeah, there you go. How are you going? Got another ladder, right? Another ladder? <laughs> From the electricity bill this time. Oh, oh my. I'm going to understand what it is. It's a uh, count balance for electricity. Yeah, that's right. Charles, I think you've got a bit of a refund with the matey. Uh, 223 bucks, I think. What? Uh, I'm in front. You're in front, mate, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, so it was just the introduction of um, with the Yes I Can, and, and I'm going to congratulate each and every one of you. You know, because it was a big step for you to come and, and, and into the into the classroom this morning. You know, and there's an old new world out there, and for us to be able to read and write, we'll see it. Yeah. We'll see it in a whole different way. Okay. So, sorry. Yes. Yeah, so yesterday we just done the river of literacy, like your goals, your dreams. What do you want? What do you want to be, or where do you want to be in three months, and then six months, and twelve months? And like, yeah, we've got a few good ones, like 
get off the drugs and get your license, learn to read and write. That's a main one, yeah. So if you just want to share something with us, Narelle? I want to get my license. Well, that's yeah, good. Right. Yeah. 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 Get married and... Good on you, Narelle. My first day, I like it. Get out of the house. Oh. I'm doing another program too with domestic violence. So I start the class when they come on, I have to go to that class too. And that's why I want to join this program too, because I sit at home and think too much. The ice was bad in this town, I reckon every town back. I had a go at it, I didn't like it. I can't spell, like, the right letters and that, but I can't. I just spell them how I pronounce them. Yeah. That's what I want to learn to spell. And help my kids. I've got two sons in jail. I've got uh, contact with them. So I haven't got a phone. Can't have a phone here. They steal it. Got to you get up your house around here. Look at this kid. me a, a while but I had to get used to doing emails and learning to where to file things away, doing the office work, the admin and stuff. Yeah. Well, she's Four? in five because she came oh, today. Oh, five. Okay. Glad to have each other. <laughs> and, and just getting a phone and putting credit on the phone. You know, you'd answer the phone at home, mate. You just talk. You, and especially when it was your family, you was right, you just have a good old yep, yep, you know, talk up. Hello, Barry. Hey, Deborah, how you going? It was a struggle. It was really, really hard, you know. But we eventually got the young blokes in. Excuse my accent, because in my country people speak Spanish. I also speak Russian. I say a lot of... Hola. 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 And Hola. Hasta la vista. Hola. It's goodbye. Hola. Maybe you know hasta la vista because of the movie, the 10 minutes oh, yeah. to hasta la vista, Hola. baby. Hola. OK, now we will watch a DVD with explanation about the pronoun in general. Those people you will see uh, are from Grenada, a small island in the Caribbean. So there are black people at us because they were conquered by the British but they speak a different English, so there will be three different English here. You, me, and then. But we get along very well. Hello. Welcome to the Yes I Can program. My name is Lauren, and this is the first of two introductions to this course. When they don't come, I get disappointed, but you can't force people, you know. We still go out and encourage them and push them, and we show them that we care, you know. Uncle Corey will come down and say, oh, I had problems with my tap leak, and you know, or, or, or anything, you know. We get on the phone and we ring up the House Commission or Home Care or someone for them. We just want our people to be able to learn. And we want to know, we want to know what's stopping them. Because we're a class, we're a team, we all are one mob and we look after one another. 
Yeah, so few students still not coming. A couple of students that's I think they're going to withdraw. They said they're not interested in coming anymore. Stuff's been happening out there with family issues and stuff. Yeah. Can you just catch us up on who they are? Um, Marika's, she's not interested. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to check on Mark Boney and, mm. and Stanley. Yeah, and Ethan's withdrawn. So is Annie Della. She really needs to be here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so... It, it's, it's serious today and tomorrow. We really need to get people. So if there's anyone else you guys think of today, you know, pass it on to Tani and she can go and chase them up. Because we want this class to happen. <coughs> and we need a few extra. So we better then turn to Nolene and his brother. Who yeah. is it, his brother? Yeah, Daniel. Yeah. Daniel, OK. Yeah. See, that's the family. So no, they're all very yeah, shy, okay. very frightened, very shy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Janine Murphy? Yeah. What about Janine Murray? Sick. What do you know about her? She's shy too. And she's very shy as well. That's Anna Mary. Yeah, very shy. Daughter. Yeah. yeah. Shame. Shame, yeah. I don't okay, know. So in my country, in my country, it would be your task to take her into the class. That's what we do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're the same. Yeah, the same. Yeah, no, every day. I am. Yeah, I yeah. see her. Anyway, I will do my, my, I don't know, something like that. Because I see her when she comes yeah. to be here. Come with her Cuban style brother. Does she die? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had a bit of doubts about coming to the program and once we seen I was in our own community, our elders and that, felt more comfortable and, yeah. Because I'm just over being frustrated out of fill of forming or get other things. Yeah, this is my start to actually do these things in life, yeah, pretty much. Okay, so good morning, everyone. How are you all going? Thank you. Oh, that's good. Still a bit cold and... Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit cold, I'm cold. So thank you for coming, Archie. Yeah. And Kurt Boy, thank you for coming back. And your little shadow there. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. And Jaira. Hello, how are you? So we have Kurt back. Yes, that's good. So can anybody tell me about the word solidarity? For example, you help somebody who, are, who is in need. Yes? In the case of Brewarina, you can help each other, not only in the classroom. Get together for uh, a fight against ICE, you know? For the betterment of the kids or anything. So that's the word solidarity. So I'll get you all to put this in your exercise book and topic music is part of our culture. Yes, yeah, so when we see one or two of the students struggling and falling behind a bit, we'll work as a team together to help those people to catch up so that we can all be at that same level together. Sorry, peoples, I've just do that. Can you write a sentence using one of the words? We really push them because they think that they can't do it. But we know that they can do it, yeah. This place, it, uh, I'll tell you, is mad on death. Was, uh, there was about five funerals being here lately. Aborigines. 
See, that's the thing, that's the only way to get to know all your mob when they all come to, together, like a funeral. Any boy? I'm sick of it now, after a while you get bored. That's where you gotta have your own motor car so you can go away from Bree and get out of town for a while. Go and visit the other people you hardly see. I think this fish blind. <laughs> this thing here. Water too muddy. Come on, boy. Yeah, no, it was good growing up around here because we used to come to the river all the time, swimming. Yeah, never fish much. We always just swimming, summertime, make our little tin boats. And, yeah, because we lived at Dodge. And Dodge is just up the, up the back here of us, yeah. <laughs> he hurt my finger too, pulling him in. <laughs> Man nearly got pulled in. Hey, man. He's a big one. It's a big one. He's bigger than yours yesterday. That's a good one. Good That's size fish, meters. that one. That's a yellow belly. That's probably six metres. Gull and perch, what we call them, yellow bellies. Catch it then, John. So everyone's happy with this one, with this catch, yeah. <laughs> I've had many, many jobs, you know, but um, my job that really put me out there was Agunya. And it means safe haven for women and children. It's Aboriginal name, Agunya. Yeah, it was there that I sort of came out of my shell. I was still quiet. Then they closed Agunya down. Then we had no job. You know, having no job, just being at home, I could feel myself getting a little bit depressed and because I, I, I didn't see myself moving on or going anywhere, you know. Then I ended up getting sick, I got very sick. I had a slight, just a little mini stroke to my left side because of all the worry and all the stuff that I went through. Yeah, that was um, three years now, three years ago. Okay, let's read. Can you read this one? The word. Um, huge. Say it, huge. 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 Whistle. You know? Whistle. Leaf. Man. So uh, what I want you to do next is to to combine the word and make a sentence. Okay? Can you do that? A broad sentence. Yes, yeah, at least in your works. first in your head. Can you do that? I think you can. I made it for halfway through fourth form and I 
The sword I didn't want to scold anymore, so I mucked up. It makes you feel bad when other people can read, you know, and when you're talking to them, they can do something that you can't do. Reading. That's what I want, so I can read a book myself. Because I was thinking if I get a love letter in the mail, now other people want to know my business. Idiots. Oh, Corey's not in either. All right. Is that everyone? Yeah. Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Good morning. How you going? Good. Oh, that's good. Everyone had a cuppa and yeah. smoke yeah. and a yarn. Comfortable? Yeah. OK. So um, on Saturday, so everyone knows what's happening on Saturday. There's voting. Voting's on Saturday. Yeah, and I think they do it over at the um, community centre, the big hall. And does anyone here vote? So who's on the roll? That roll? So why aren't you on the roll? That... I just moved there. Oh, you just moved? Yeah, no, and I never ever. Did it once. Never, never ever voted, voted in my life. <laughs> never voted? No. no. Yeah? I want them to vote for me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So I'll hand you over to your teacher, to Janelle. For the dictation, we'll get you to write them in the exercise book. Gypsies are nice people. But what if they ain't nice? Yeah, you still got to write it. <laughs> 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 That's a good one, not right. <laughs> Gypsies are nice people. Fruit juice is healthy. <laughs> yeah, for the last years I've been voting and that fire was hard. But I couldn't even put a number on the thing. But now I can read a little bit than last time. He had an album for me. Ring the boat. I stayed down there for the last uh, a few months or whatever at school, so I don't have to depend on other people. Do it all myself. So what what makes a paragraph? Three or Everyone heard that? Three or more sentences? And Narelle said there was five sentences. Is that right, Kurt? More than five. I've done five. How many full stops there, Kurt? Two, three, five. So that's how many sentences there are. Well, that's a full stop. Yes. But if not a full stop, you can end with a question mark, so that's your question mark. Oh, and that's your ex exclamation mark, yeah. What, what's that there on the, the one with the last one you just saw? Yeah. What's that mean? Exclamation mark. I'll look it up in there. Is it like a question or? This one you want to say something with more enthusiasm. Be careful. You look beautiful today. So for that you use as a exclamation mark. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Charla. You're welcome. So, 
Let's we covered all that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get you put practice in your know, book map because it's practice time. That's from Australia. Good job. Do you a lot of bottles here, John? Tell you. Too many, really. Clean all our party up. That's a more, more rubbish I ever think. Thank you for the next lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Haven't Too many. You do a lot of stuff when you're not drinking. Cheers, he, oh, he dropped it. But I tried it so many times in the dry out center. It just doesn't work. <coughs> just got to have that willpower, and which I never had. I'm very thankful that I've got the, the Lord in my life. And it's been over 20 years and I don't know, when I, my kids started to grow up, I knew that um, there had to be changes for them because I, um, I found that I neglected them through the alcohol. That I used to drink and I used to smoke, but as soon as I turned a Christian, those were the first two things that just left me instantly. Didn't worry me anymore. Yeah. And I can be around in my own mob. Even though they'll even still bring my past up, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, you were the biggest drunk. And they'll say, go on, sister, you'll get tempted. And I said, it doesn't worry me. Love you. Mm, I said, I'm over that. Yeah. <laughs> So now we're just going to recap the lesson, what we've just done, which is the letter Y and the positive message. Keep an eye on this. So think of words that start with the letter Y or that's got the letter Y in them. I. Mm -hmm. Yandy, for a plant. <laughs> Well, yeah, because we don't know what it is. <laughs> what about the fish? Yellow belly. Put yarn, you know, we all smoke it. What is that? Marijuana. Yarn is short for marijuana. And? It's a positive? It's a healing plant anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you reckon? Oh, I don't know what to say. They eat it on medication? They're right. Yeah. For medication as well. Yeah. So you're on the news? Yeah. 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 That's a food, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's right. another word for um, sweet potato. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I know a good plant. Poppy. That's a drug. Well, I'm putting yarn because that's a plant. Isn't it? And the other way people say, I want to talk to you, I want to have... Babies. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> How do you say that? <laughs> I want to have a yarn. Yes? What do you say? I want to have a yarn with you. Oh, Shepherd, Come on, 
on, girls. One more. Come on, girls. Church, church. Go. Is that Rachel? That's Rachel, isn't it? Go, Rachel. I'm pretty blown away at the moment by Kurt. I, I, yeah, I can see something there and I can see him moving forward. Yeah, and it makes me feel good. Come on, girls, keep it going! Because his, um, his little family is in Dubbo and we don't know what, what went wrong, you know. Something's happened, he had to go through the courts now where he's not allowed to in Dubbo. And then um, he had his little boy up here for a few weeks. And um, he came every day. And then when his little boy went back to Dubbo to his mother, we, we just lost Kurt like that. We just lost him, you know. And every time we went and seen him, he was, he was always drunk, you know. He'd make some excuse up. But we know deep down inside he was missing his family, missing that little boy, you know. Yeah, but we knew we had to push him, to encourage him to come back. And he came back. What is important? What is it in, uh, important to spend time with your children to learn them and to show them all things in life? But a smile from them makes me happy. So that's what I call a happy family for life. <laughs> praise and honour and all the glory, eh? you know that, know that he's a good God, he's a mighty God, he's an awesome God, you know, and mm. thank you for our little community, you know, of Warren, even though we've um, been through a sad time and we're still going through a sad time with our little community, you know, and just thank him, you know, for the Yes I Can classes, for the Literacy for Life, for what it's doing down there, you know, and yeah, but they just love it, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, praise the Lord, if there's another intake, then, um, then it'll happen, you know, and, yeah. yeah. If it doesn't happen again, my people will miss out. And we'll just go backwards. And I won't have a job anymore. Too fast, Clarence? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, do you want me to play that again? I can't understand what you yeah. Okay. Do we have to write what's in this letter. Okay, now now what we need, need to do is just to follow the reading. Yes? And to see what are the words we don't understand. I mean, you don't understand. Yes? Okay, is there any word you don't understand there? Is that all right? Yeah. Lorraine, Janine, Lorraine? I understand. Okay. So, I will read in a different way. Dear Grace, we were very happy in your country where we visited many exciting and overwhelming sites. Clarence? Is there any word you don't understand there? No, 
Tom gets ice and do this or lead this himself. Didn't to yourself? Yes. 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 Only the top part. But no, no. Yes. Now we, we focus on this. Okay. Let us read together. We were very happy in your country where we visited many exciting and overwhelming sites. Larry's he's got a little bit frustrated about it's too fast for him. And I had to come out then and ask him what, what was happening. Oh, well, I'm going to have someone there if I can't speak in a word when I'm right. You want me to come and sit with you in, when you go back in? Yeah. Yeah, everyone, brother. Just rock right on the wall. You're reading and writing. <laughs> now, what can you do? So we're going to write a letter, okay? So the letter should have an, at least one paragraph, which is three or more sentences. Dear Loretta, I miss you when, uh, when are you coming home to break? I have been very busy. Oh, going, 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 going to the yes I can. Going to the yes I can class. And we are having lots of fun. That's it. First letter I ever written in my life. My sister here, it's my niece there. Love them for the world. This woman here, Loretta Murphy, that's me, ugly bastard. The husband was. It's the one I used to live with. Couple's gonna read, I think Kurt might read his. Nereel's gonna start. <laughs> Dear Colin, hi, how are you? Good, I hope. Sorry that I never went to see you at the police station yesterday, but I hope that you're coping well in there. I thought that I'd drop a few lines to say, I love you and my thoughts are with you. Love, Mum. I heard about this program from a friend of mine, so I decided to come to this program. At first, shame. At second, laugh. At first, it was like learning. I mean, everything from A to Z, like I never before. So I kept coming to this program to keep learning more and more. 
what gave me self-esteem in myself and comfortable in learning in myself. So thanks to our teachers, all of that good work they do for us. Again, thanks. Thank you, that's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and then when Kurt, you know, Ruddy's, I was really touched by it. Yeah. I just, I, I love it because I love just helping my people, you know. And I know that I can reach out to them in a, in a whole different level. I'll, I'll always help my people. This is where my heart is, this is where home is, this is where my people are. Can anyone tell me what today is? It's the last day. Yeah, it is, is, it is the last day. But come December, you'll have a big graduation. So that's where you'll receive your certificate. So um, get your pretties. <laughs> <laughs> and Deborah um, called yesterday. She said, congratulations to all the students and you just make me feel so proud, each and every one of you. Yeah. That's what I get for coming to school here. That's what I, I can read my mail now. Only got to get help with the big words in it, but I'll tell you what, I'm doing good at the school. I stand here today as a proud black Nimba woman and as the local Aboriginal coordinator of the Yes I Can program in Biwarana. I would like to say thank you to my family and friends 
my elders and amazing mentors, Annie Grace Shillingsworth, <laughs> Annie Patty Smith, Annie Irene Gordon, Annie Jean French and Annie Eva Bowman. My mentors, Annie Doreen McHughes, Annie Leonard McHughes, Sister Di Hardy, and my greatest inspiration, Annie Grace Gordon. <laughs> Thank you to those who worked by my side and supported me through it all, Janelle Frail. Those from the Literacy for Life Foundation, Deborah Dernan, Bob Bowden, Ruth, Francis, Anyone else that I forgot, you know who you are. A big thank you to Charla and his country of Cuba. <laughs> and most of all, my executive director, an amazing Nemo man, and a leader for his people, Jack Beetson. <laughs> I would like to hear a little bit how this film um, and uh, for Janelle, Janelle, Mary and Norman, you worked there. that. I would like to hear what you're doing today and uh, how that impact, how that changed maybe your life and uh, what you do today. I work for Killip's Family Service in Verona and I'm with mm -hmm. Um, I used to work with Janelle, but I'm not no more. So I work for the Land Council, Rewind Aboriginal Land Council now, as um, an, in, an housing inspector. Like, having taken part of in the campaign, have, have worked with the students in that campaign, um, did that change the way? You, you do your work today. Well, yeah, we, I think because we was more connected to them, because um, we didn't just like talk to them in the workplace, we was all, also connecting with them outside the workplace, like out at parties or in the streets or, you know, at gatherings or whatever. Yeah, so. Would they ring for anything? And, and yeah. After hours, ring for anything. We need help here. Can you help us? And I was like, yeah. Do you still see then? Do you see your students every once in a while? That's oh, amazing. Yeah. I see them a lot of them nearly every day. I'm I'm an employment services officer now. Work for a job network agency. So um. See them nearly every day when they come for appointments or like literacy for life. That was my first real job. First. Mine's too. Yeah. Huh. So that was a big step for you, Norman. Yeah. Mm. And what are your students doing today? Uh, they had uh, dreams that, that they shared in the beginning. What are they doing today? Um, well, well, some have passed away. Some of them, yeah. like some of them, have passed away. And um, like with the literacy, with the Yes I Can program, the like once that left, um, some of them went back to their old ways. Their old ways, like it's a like 
if the literacy for life program was still here, like to help more, you know, <laughs> not just. Um, we need it back in the community. Yeah, yeah. we need it back. Uh, to um, we need it back. Yeah. <laughs> Like even a few of the students, you see them on the screen, like, when's that class coming back out here? You know, that was good, that. Because yeah. we had one student who done three intakes and he's very keen to do it again. He asks me every day, he says, when's that class coming back out to bring again? Still say that in a lot of our participants. One of their barriers is numeracy, yeah. We try and okay. help them overcome. Yeah. So it is pretty much needed again in town. Oh. Um, Bob, can you um, tell us a little bit about uh, the Josie Puedo, the, the, if uh, there has been a continuity? Um, the situation in, um, <clears throat> in Australia is that the Josie Puedo campaign can only run when the government agrees to provide the money for it to run. And what happens is after we've done one or two intakes or even three in a town, the government cuts the funding and there's, oh. no more, and there's no more money to keep working in that town or that community. So at that point, sometimes they say, well, we will give you money to go to another community, but they won't keep working in the same place for more than one or two years for and this means that um, we try very hard in the post-literacy phase of the campaign to connect people with other providers like the, um, the other post-secondary providers like the technical and further education colleges or to other providers who might help keep helping the students. But in many cases, the students aren't really ready to go on to those kinds of more formal institutions. They really need the ongoing non-formal support, especially from their own people. The problem with the formal institutions is they don't employ the same local people to do the teaching. They often employ professionals who come in from outside. The big difference about Yossi Puedo, about Yes, I Can, is that it employs the Cubans um, believe that the teaching is best done by the people in the community themselves. And so they, um, the Cuban advisor and the others who come in from outside, we train local people to be the teachers and the other formal colleges and institutions don't do that. So these particular students, because of all the barriers and challenges they have, they're not as willing to go into classes that are not taught by their own people. And so when, yes, I can, when Yossi Puedo money runs out and we can no longer keep paying local teachers to teach, then the students have nowhere else to go. And this is a big issue in Australia that we have been working on now for nearly over 10 years to get the government to see that this is something that you should stay in a community until the job is finished. You should stay there until everybody who wants to do it has done it. And until all the people who have done it have had the support they need to continue on with other work and other, other activities like into employment or into other courses. Um, so here, oh, this is fantastic. So Mary has now made it over to the other office. And um, I will stop talking now and you can start talking to Mary again. Thank you, Bob. Hi, Mary. Hi. Okay. Hey, Hi. So it's so good to see, to hear you. <laughs> okay. You, so Mary, um, so now that, um, would you share, could you share with us a little bit about your experience working in the campaign? Yeah, no, well, I'm, I've always loved working with my people and working with them, working with them at, a, at a grassroots level. Um, but when, when we first went out and done the 
the surveys, um, we was all surprised of our, the majority and of our many of our people that didn't know how to learn to read and write. And some of them, you know, that when they did the surveys, um, uh, but when they did the surveys to say that they could actually read and write, but then once we got them into down into the into the into the room, um, we found out then that they couldn't. Yeah, yeah. And we don't know why that was, you know, may because they were shy, because they were shame, you know, that they didn't want to let anyone know that they could read, read and write, you know, because our, our people are very shy and they get very shame and, yeah, and, and, you know, a lot of other things that happen in life, you know, from, you know, there were elders, we had elders, we had young people, we had middle-aged people, and, you know, we had our elders there that came off the, off the mission that worked and never ever got the opportunity to read and write to go to school. I'm a teacher myself, and uh, I also learned a lot about the Cuban literacy campaign before Josi Puedo. And uh, I have always been impressed with uh, how students and, uh, of course, instructors work to towards the goal of reading and writing. Um, and uh, many instructors they have shared that their lives changed as well as they work with the students. Yeah, well, I know that there's a few of the students that have found jobs. Mm -hmm. a, couple, a couple even moved away to, to the city and have found jobs down, down in the city as well. You mentioned that this was a grassroots movement. And I, yeah. I'm curious if, uh, you, um, if it would be possible for, for those of you that uh, took part in the campaign and uh, maybe um, somehow um, request or demand that the program is back. Yeah, well, I think we do. And we, we, got, a, we got a group of elders and pow powerful people that sit around, you know, with the land council and with the Nimba community working parties that that did, you know, go in there and try and fight for the um, campaign to to continue to, to run, you know, and we've seen the we seen the outcome of it, you know, of the campaign when it did run in the community and and how important it was for our people, you know. And and it was it wasn't just a school, it wasn't just a place to to learn, it was a it was a meeting place. It was a gathering. You know, look, people didn't even come. It didn't come even come to the classes. They just wanted to sit and have a cup of tea and or have something to eat. You know, and just bringing them, bring them, bringing them in there. It was it was um, it was a yeah, it was a campaign that could have kept going, and, and we did want it to keep going. The First Nations senator. Um, Senator Pat Dodson came to Brewarrina and saw the campaign and saw how effective it was. And he undertook to fight for the campaign to continue. But in our federal system of government, his party has not been in power for many years. So um, the party that is in power is a very conservative neoliberal party. And they have been unwilling to keep the campaign going. So the hope is that in the next election, the, um, the um, party that supports the campaign much more will come to power, in which case it's hoped then that the campaign will be able to, um, what we say, upscale, work on a much larger scale, because mm -hmm. the current government has only been willing to fund it one community at a time and one intake at a time and uh, so it's very much like a drip feed of funding. And mm. we, are, we are fairly sure that the reason is that it is a very empowering process. And um, 
you can see from the film how people become much more outspoken and are ready to speak up after they have been in the campaign. And we think that um, that might be one of the reasons why it's hard to win that support from government, because it actually does empower people in a way. And they people start demanding what it is they need. Um, one of the students, you know, started to campaign for about his housing that he had there were problems in his house and which had never been fixed and so he started to lobby the government about that so those sorts of activities by people um, which empower people are also ones that the government of the day is not that willing to encourage a lot of people are not registered to vote and these are very small communities the big cities most of the voters live in the big cities and so it's um, getting funding to these more remote areas is very difficult because people don't have a lot of political power, if you like, you know. But uh -huh. I do know that, but I do know that um, people have become more politically active. They have become more active through the, through the Aboriginal Land Council as a result of the campaign. And so if the different communities can link up with each other, maybe they that have the different communities which have had the campaign can link up with each other. Maybe they can put more pressure on because there's more of them, you know, in each community. It might only be 40 or 50 or 60 people, but if all the different communities were to join up, it would be a bigger force, you know. But again, that's that takes resources to organise that kind of thing. But that's yeah. certainly the way that that people would like to go is they would like to be able to join up and work together you know like even in Brewarana it was people from other communities came to help the Brewarana people get started and then the Brewarana people help people in other communities get started so it is a thing that is is yeah. we say going up and down the river tell us a little bit about how did you include the culture because yes was it an issue no, uh, no, it wasn't because how we dealt with the, with our culture is we got the different nations like um, myself and Janelle we Nimba and Norman Murawari, so we all worked together in, in in the in the classroom, you know, and and to to talk on behalf of the Murawari people. Um, Norman had that authority; he had that. He helped them that way, and with his authority, you know, because of being um, a Murawari man, and for myself and Janelle, you know, talking on behalf of the Nimba people and working together. Mm -hmm. That's how we dealt with that culture, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, and we didn't, we didn't leave the other cultures out neither. We didn't even, we didn't leave other um, tribes out. We brought them all in together because we all told them we're all in this to learn together as one people, you know, one tribe. And I'm reading about a man who is an educator called Paulo Freire. And uh, he organized um, some campaigns in Africa. He, he, he didn't organize, he helped the people to organize their people to learn to read and write. and. Uh, he said that when people are already involved with the community, with the problems in the community, when, they, when the literacy process starts, they learn a lot faster, especially when the conversation in the class is about the problems too. But they need to understand, they become illiterate to advocate for themselves and for their communities. Mary and Janelle and Norman might don't want me to um, skype them up, as they say, to um, say, make them feel um, like I'm boasting, but they have become extraordinary advocates for their people in their community. And um, they have been speaking out about the needs of their community. And this is one of the most extraordinary things about the Yosipuedo is that in every community we have been, the people who have worked in the campaign, the instructors and the coordinators, have become outspoken advocates for their people. 
And that's happened in every single community. So not just Mary and Janella Norman, but Tanir in Angonia and Owen and Shirley in Wilcannia and Lillian in Burke. So there are people up and down the river now who speak up for their community because of the experience of working in the campaign. Um, and they, I know they're nodding about maybe they don't want to say that about themselves, but that's who they have become, I think. That's wonderful. And, yet, and we still do that today, um, Rita, because um, Norman's with the Land Council, so and we're all still in the main street of Dwarana, the little community. Norman's in the Land Council. I'm just one door away from him with um, the Killips Family Service and Janelle's down the end of the street here with, um, with Reddy, you know, and, and the people still come to us. They still pop into the Land Council look for Norman, they still pop into the to McKillops to see me and, and come in here to see Janelle, you know, just for that still for that little bit of a support and push and help. Yeah. And we still do that today. Even though we moved on to, you know, different jobs, different positions, but we're still there and we still have people. Mm. When people watch this film, how do they react? What is their um, reaction when they watch this film? Well, Rita, there was a few years ago that I went to Sydney and um, I went to a big um, First Nations Aboriginal event down there in Sydney. It's, it's called Yarvin. And thousands, thousands of people, you know, um, Aboriginal First Nations people gather there at the time of celebration because it's... Um, on um, Australia Day, and um, I was walking past this lady, and she she recognised me from the film, and she was nearly crying, and um, she said, "Aunt," she said, "You make me feel so proud." She said, "I feel so proud of what what you're doing for our people," you know. She said, "What is done." I seen the film, she said, and that's what we should be doing. It's our people working with one another and making a difference. And she, she was just so proud of it. Same thing happened to me in Dubbo. A bloke walked up to me, he recognised my face from the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he asked me a bit about the campaign and he said, you know, he'd like, he, he doesn't live in, he lives in Dubbo, but he said he'd like to see you come back out in the little communities again. I've uh, got a lot of reactions on Facebook, all my friends, they said they cried, they laughed, they, yeah. <laughs> when the Literacy for Life Foundation goes to a new community, one of the first things they do is they show the film in my own words. And so, and as soon as the community see that film, then they understand why they need to have support the campaign. And they embrace it enthusiastically because they see their own people teaching. They see that the campaign is something that empowers people. Um, they see the changes in people that you see in the film. And that, so for instance, the campaign is now running in the centre of Australia in a little town called Tennant Creek, where the majority of people in the community are speaking their own language as their first language. And they are learning literacy in English now through the campaign. And they, they decided to do that after they had watched the film in my own words. So that was part of getting their support to have the campaign in their community. So even though Mary and Janelle and Norman and the students aren't able to travel to Tennant Creek, you know, which is hundreds and hundreds of kilometres away, the film shows the people in that community what is possible and helps to build more support for the campaign in, in these places. And in the same way, I should add, that we show Catherine Murphy's film, Maestras, about the Cuban students teaching in 1961 we show that at the beginning of the campaign today, and that also inspires people in what is possible with the literacy campaign. So there is a um, World Council of Indigenous, the, 
there is a world conference of Indigenous peoples about education that happens every few years. Um, but the, um, the thing is that the literacy campaign is a very grassroots campaign. It is um, the real grassroots people who maybe don't go to these sorts of conferences very often, you know. Um, mm. But sometimes the instructors can go to these conferences, if not the students. And so um, that's one, maybe not international conferences, but um, one of the instructors from another community from Angonia, she travelled up to Darwin to a conference in Darwin to talk about the campaign. So to link up with other Indigenous groups in Australia, but the same thing could happen with support. But it's like um, the communities are, in Australia are isolated by distance, you know, very large distances that people have to travel to meet up with each other. And so um, the support that they need is to help to make those links with each other before they can make links even internationally, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that Mary and Janelle and Norman would love to go to Chicago and talk about what they do in Chicago. Uh, so <laughs> they're putting up their hands. Um, yes. well, I went to Melbourne back in 2016. That's right. Janelle, Janelle went to Melbourne and spoke at a conference about the campaign in Melbourne. Yes. <laughs> Can I just tell the uh, our colleagues in Brewarana that I got a letter from a young Afro-American woman, Kimberly Waller, who works with Catherine Murphy on the Cuban literacy campaign. And she asked me to say to you in Brewarana, please express to our Aboriginal brothers and sisters how excited we are that they are joining this discussion. It is their story to tell and despite the hardships it shows, it is ultimately uplifting. When I read about Literacy for Life Foundation, it wanted me to hug humanity. As a colonised person, I know historical wounds are always with us. That gets so heavy. Yet this is an invitation to show our resilience and joy during challenging times. And I am grateful. So that young woman, Mary and Janelle and Norman, is in Chicago, or she was, I think, when she wrote that. Um, and she's travelling to Cuba soon to do some research with the Cubans. So I'm hoping she will catch up with the Cubans who helped us, like Charla in Brewarana. Because maybe one of the things we have to say is that we have to show solidarity with Cuba because Cuba is the other it's the Cubans who brought the campaign to Timor-Leste and to Australia. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the ways to help the campaign is to show solidarity with Cuba, I think. What do you think about that, Mary? So even Charla may even be watching this in, in Havana next week when it's streaming. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So Charla is the Cuban who appears in the film, who came to live in Verona oh, and was yeah. the advisor, yeah. So this spirit of international solidarity, it's such an important thing for us to keep going after the campaign, you know, that we continue. And if people in the United States, they can log on to the Literacy for Life website and they can see more about the work and maybe they can write to the Australian government and say they support it, you know. This could be something they could do. In that note, so um, I would like to, we are going to end the program and uh, I, would, um, I would like to um, thank you, uh, Norman, Janelle, M Mary, Bob, for being here with us tonight. Um, it was such an honor to hear your stories and uh, I was really moved um, as an educator and as a person, thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, thank you very much, night. Rita. Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Thanks, Janelle. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.
coração Pensar transforma, muda, é abolição Freiriana é sua missão Pensar transforma, muda, é evolução O conhecimento liberta, vamos transformar Educar o mundo de dentro pra fora interpretar Alfabetizar é